Hey guys, this is Jude. I'm the owner at the Revolver Club. Being a record enthusiast, I've been interacting with the vinyl community in India for a long time now. Over that time, I've noticed a series of questions that keep popping up. Uh, and so I decided that this would be a great time for me to launch a video series on YouTube addressing those questions. Uh, the first one being the very basic, what should my first turntable purchase be in India? Uh, and that's what I want to talk about in this video today. Before I get into recommending turntables, very briefly, I want to talk about hi-fi systems. Now, the traditional approach to building a hi-fi system is the source, which in this case obviously happens to be a turntable, plugged into an amplifier, and that amplifier powers the speakers. More and more, we're seeing younger people specifically bypass the traditional approach and pick up what we refer to as active speakers or powered speakers. And what that means is that the amplifier is built into the speaker, and so the turntable just plugs in directly. Now, the point that I'm trying to make here is the turntable is just one aspect of building a good music system. A great turntable paired up with a substandard music system is not going to do justice to the turntable and is something that I feel you should heavily avoid. Now, with that being said, let's move into why everyone's here. My recommendations on what your first turntable purchase should be. Now, generally speaking, I recommend one of three turntables. I recommend the LP60X from Audio-Technica, the Denon DP29F, or the Marantz TT5005. Now, a piece of insider information that I'm going to share with you, and that may possibly blow your mind, is that all the same turntable. If you were to open these up, they have the same motor, the same bearing, the same tone arm, the same cartridge, and the same electronics. They just have a different logo. Now, in the case of Denon and Marantz, they're in fact owned by the same company, DNM Holdings. Marantz is obviously marketed as a premium brand, whereas Denon is marketed as a more mass market brand. In the case of the LP60 from Audio-Technica, Audio-Technica has spent a ton of money on good marketing. So whenever you type in LP60 or Audio-Technica into Google, you're going to see the LP60X pop up immediately. But again, I re-emphasize they're all exactly the same. So if you want best value for money, consider going in for the Denon DP29F. The only reason you should be looking at the Marantz or the Audio-Technica is because you have a slight affinity to the way they look. And that's really it. Now, all the turntables I've just spoken about all come with a built-in preamp, so you don't need to worry about buying an additional preamp. What that means is that all these turntables can be plugged into any kind of speaker, including a basic Bluetooth speaker with just an aux in. I'm now going to get into after-sales related issues. This is a sticky point for a lot of customers. They're very worried about what issues they're going to face after they buy the turntable. Now, with the three turntables I've just spoken about, broadly speaking, you're going to face two issues. One is stylus deterioration or damage and potentially having to replace your belt. Okay, so I'll get into the stylus and needle first. The stylus is an Audio-Technica 3600N. Uh, it's rated for between 600 and 800 hours of playback. That number goes 800 plus if you play sort of pristine records. That number will go 600 and below if you play beaten up scratch records. So the moral of the story is play high quality records. It will increase the lifespan of your needle. Okay. Uh, other potential issues that might happen is you're going to break the stylus or the needle. If that happens, unfortunately, it's not covered by warranty. A replacement stylus and cartridge at this point in time, June 2022, is 5,000 rupees. So it's not a cheap proposition. So make sure that you take care to avoid, you know, heartbreak. Uh, the second issue being belts. Now, belts are made of rubber, obviously. These are all belt-driven uh, turntables. And so what happens as a result of the humidity in India and the heat in India is that these belts over time tend to start getting warped, lose elasticity, etc, etc. Uh, the easiest way to avoid this is to make sure that your turntable is in consistent use. Uh, but generally speaking, after three or four years, you're going to most likely have to replace your belt. A replacement belt at this point is about a thousand rupees odd. Uh, and the easiest way to notice and to tell if your belt requires replacement is if you start noticing speed variation uh, in your turntable. So if your music starts sounding a little slower, generally speaking, it's most likely that you need to change your belt. To wrap this up, don't spend too much money on that first turntable. Instead, focus on building a collection of LPs. 50 LPs at the bare minimum, 100 ideally. Second, pay close attention to that stylus and needle. There's nothing more heartbreaking than having to hear about someone who bought a fresh turntable and then ended up breaking their stylus within the first few days. Thanks everyone for being part of this video. 
I hope that whatever I've said today helps you make an informed decision on that first turntable purchase. Everything that I've spoken about today, all the products, all the turntables, all the accessories and all the replacement parts, all of that can be found linked down in the description below. If you do have any additional doubts or questions that you need, please feel free to reach out in the comments below. Uh, I hope you're going to be part of the future videos that we have as part of this series. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.